welcome in to visit with us for getting help from Uncle Sam. In this case, we're getting help from the Secretary of the State of Alabama, John Merrill. And we are going to talk about fundamentally everything you need to know to be able to go and vote in this general election. Right. So we're going to start with you, sir, and let us start from and, A to Z. And our viewers need to realize that all the voting in the state comes under your mm -hmm. yes, department. Sir. Yes, So sir. that's the reason we have you. Secretary of State, what's that got to do with it? It's your baby. <laughs> yes, sir. Everything. Absolutely. Everything. Well, l let me share a little bit about our office okay. to make okay. sure that your Good. viewers understand this particular part of why we would be involved. Mm -hmm. The office of the Secretary of State is the oldest office in Alabama. Alabama had a Secretary of State before we were a state. In 1818, mm. Henry Hitchcock was appointed to fill that role in 1818 and 1819 when Alabama was still a part of the Mississippi Territory. Wow. Of course, Alabama became the 22nd state admitted to the Union under James Monroe's presidential administration mm -hmm. when he was the fifth president, December 14, 1819. Hmm. But the code and the Constitution of Alabama give more than a thousand assigned duties and responsibilities to the person that holds this position. The one that most people are familiar with is elections and election right. administration, voter registration, things like that. But business and corporations, licensing, trademarking, mm -hmm. and international adoptions also come through our office. And so those are the things we concentrated on the most during the campaign and the things we focused on the most since I've been the secretary. But like you were talking about with election administration or voter registration, mm -hmm. one of the goals that I've had, Miss Virginia, is to ensure that each and every eligible U.S. citizen that's a resident of Alabama, Jack, is registered to vote and has a photo ID so they can participate in the electoral mm -hmm. process. We want everybody that wants to be registered to vote to register and to exercise their right to vote so their voice will be heard. Right. Now, we're sitting here in the middle of September. Yes, so sir. basically, you already have to be registered somewhere. Well, at this point or not? No, sir. You have up until 14 days prior to the election on Good. November the 8th in order for you Great. to be registered. So mm -hmm. it will be the last full week of October that you will still have to be able to register. And what they need to do is go to their county courthouse to the probate office? That's one way of doing okay. it, but it's at the local board of registrars. But let me tell you what we've done to ensure that Good. everybody is having <laughs> okay. a greater opportunity to Good. participate than they've had before. Good. On January the 22nd of this year, we started electronic registration. Mm -hmm. So if a citizen wants to, they can go to their computer or they can go to the app on the phone and download the app and they can register to vote for the first time or change their voter registration. Now, one of the things that people are always excited about when I share this is how convenient it is. Mm -hmm. But then we have some friends like Miss Virginia who would say, John, I know that's a great idea, but <laughs> I don't want How to do I know that nobody is impersonating me? That's right. Because in order for you to use it, you have to have a valid Alabama driver's license. Okay. Because okay. there may be more than one John Merrill. There may be mm -hmm. more than one John Merrill in Montgomery County. Right. Not more than one John Merrill with my birthday, right. my driver's license number, and my Social Security mm -hmm. card. So what that means is we're able to check against the Alabama Law Enforcement Agency's driver's license database to mm -hmm. ensure that nobody's impersonating that individual. It reduces the number of errors that could be committed when someone's registered, and it enables those yes. folks to be able to be added to the voter rolls like that mm -hmm. instead of going through the old process of me handwriting the form and right. filling it out and then you taking it and looking at it and passing it on to Jack who looks and maybe Jack made a mistake when he was typing in mm -hmm. and maybe it was just one letter, right. but that one it's, letter is a problem. Oh yeah. And so it helps to make it more efficient and more effective. Okay, now you mentioned it, you could do it with an app on your phone. Yes, sir. You need to let our viewers know how do you get that app. Vote for Alabama. You Good. go to okay. the Apple store. And, just, um, and that's what's, what we need to let yeah, them know Yes, sir. That. Apple or iPhone and okay. you can download it. It's a free app. Called it's Vote for, for Alabama. Alabama. Yes, sir. Good. Yes, sir. Okay. Vote for Alabama. Good. Good. Now they know. Yes, now, sir. Now, what is the best way, though, if let's say we have some of our viewers who are not very computer literate. Savvy. Sure. A and we really do need to cover this. Sure. For those of you who are not going to do it on the Internet or yes, on computer Yes, ma'am. And you can still use the old style by simply going to the board of registrars mm -hmm. or going to one of the locations where we have our mobile unit, or you can actually call our office and we would mail you a form so you can fill it out and you can return it in the way that's 
preferable to you and then we'll have you added to the roles. All right, that's good to know. That's yes, good to know. So we, we would also like to cover, you know, you mentioned that there are some ways, you know, when you go in, we want to be very sure that our vote is secure. Yes, ma'am. But before we go there, okay. let, me, let me share too, to make sure that all your viewers understand this. There have been a number of people who've been concerned about certain things when it comes to voter registration. We want to eliminate all fears and all reservations mm -hmm. and any hesitation that might exist about folks being able to participate. So. We have the Board of Registrar's offices open in all 67 counties every day that the courthouse is open in those counties. But that's not convenient for some people. Okay. So we've had our mobile unit go to all 67 counties at least one time in 2015 and again this year. And we go to all the can't miss festivals throughout the state. So we've been to the Tomato Festival in Slocum. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. We've been to the Chilton County Peach right. Festival in Clanton. We've been to the Peanut Butter Festival right. in Brundage and the Peanut Festival in Dothan, in Dothan. and the Rattlesnake Rodeo in Op, <laughs> along with the Magic right. City Classic in right. Birmingham because we want to go where people are and that enables people to have it come to them. But the last thing I want to make sure that you know is that some people have said that the photo ID requirement is a restriction that's designed to keep some people from voting, to keep some people from being able to exercise right. their right to have their voice heard. We will go to people's homes and make photo IDs for them if they are homebound and they can't right. get out. We've Wonderful. done that before right. and we'll continue to do John, that. John, we're going to get you come back That's next great. week because yes, there's sir. a lot yep. more things we More need to questions. Yes, this is a hot subject and we're running out of time in this segment. And just remember this, it's right around the corner, the first Tuesday in November. It's a big general election, and we want to make sure that you're set to go into the booth. And we'll be right back right after this.